back from our bike ride and I had an idea for a dish that I want to prepare for you and have you experience something really cool and interesting. So yeah, we're gonna take some baby bell mushrooms, a little bit of shallot and one of my favorite finds of 2019, which was smoked soy sauce. So if you don't have it, you can always use liquid smoke, but we're going to smoke some mushrooms in the oven and then we'll make a really quick pasta sauce that is actually plant-based that will make you feel like you're at a fine restaurant. So uh, stay tuned, I'm going to go change and we'll get on to our dish. Okay, so what I've done with the mushrooms is I sliced them and then I made, um, I guess a marinade for lack of a better word, with smoked soy sauce some olive oil and a little bit of pepper and a splash of water to thin it out. Then all we're going to do is put it onto a pan that's been prepared with with some uh, spray and um, get them kind of as, oh, as uh, spread out as you can. We want them to roast really well in the oven. If you don't have smoked soy sauce, you can always use liquid smoke. That works well, and hopefully in about another month here, I'll be able to actually smoke these in the smoker outside. So we're gonna smoke these for about 20 minutes, and what I want them to do is really to convert to a really nice brown so that when we put them into our sauce, it's just gonna make a nice meaty flavor. So these will go in the oven for about 15, 20 minutes. We'll check them, we'll let them cool, and then we'll go to the next step. Okay, so we're ready to assemble our dinner. Um, we have roasted, remember we roasted, smoke roasted our mushrooms in smoked soy sauce, and they're just glistening and sticky and yummy. So we're gonna add those in at the very last minute. So now we're just gonna make our sauce. During the time that uh, things have been away, um, I've cooked the pasta, so that's ready to go. And the pasta is, um, I'll tell you about the pasta in just a little bit. It's a Colorado brand. It's very exciting. <clears throat> and I've saved the pasta water, which is a really good tip for you. And so, yeah, so we're going to add a little bit of olive oil. Not a lot. Just a touch. Just like, one of, again, one of those five-ingredient <clears throat> Five ingredient dinners once you kind of get some of the basics out of the way. So I'm going to do a little product promotion. They don't pay me for this. I just love going to our farmers markets and finding out what uh, interesting things are happening. So um, this company is Pastaficio out of Boulder County. And in Boulder County they are growing a lot of um, ancient grains, um, just a lot of wonderful things, some uh, kamut, uh, rye, barley, obviously for the, uh, <clears throat> some of this is for the brewing industry, and then part of it is just a wonderful uh, collective of uh, farmers who are trying to bring back some of the wonderful wheats um, that have kind of gotten lost in translation as we've moved to just white white flour, all-purpose all flour. flour. So, so <clears throat> pastafici, I'm waiting on my oil to uh, warm up, is made with whole grain, organic wheat flour, organic semolina, and El Dorado Springs water. So it's a Colorado water product. So I happened upon them at the farmer's market, and I was like, oh my gosh, that is so cool. And to get whole grain, locally made pasta. So yeah, here we go. So <clears throat> what I'm doing is, this recipe is, a riff off of a, of a recipe that I had gotten in Venice, Italy. I love porcini mushrooms. I'm going to put a picture of a, of a bolete that I actually went foraging for here in, in uh, Colorado and made a dish with last year. Um, they're in the same family, porcinis and boletes. I love fresh porcinis. You really can't get a lot of them here unless you're here or in the Northwest. Um, and so um, I had to, I could have eaten this every single day. It was a, a white wine cream sauce. And I liked it so much, I asked the guy to give me the recipe. So um, he gave me the recipe in his broken English, and I was able to kind of figure it out. So, and, and what I've done is made it um, 
plant-based. So it still has wonderful flavors. I'm hoping we can get this done in less than five minutes. I might have to use video magic to cut out a little bit because I really am trying to keep these videos low. <clears throat> but basically what we're doing now is we're sauteing a shallot. So you get a little bit of garlic, a little bit of onion flavor. With that kind of onion. I need it a little more golden because as you recall from the last video, my husband really doesn't like chunks in it and I've kind of gotten used to not wanting chunks of something other than garlic. You can never have enough chunks of garlic in something. Um, so now what we're going to do is we're just going to squirt some tomato paste. I used to get the cans and cut them up and freeze them and you know why do that when you can go to the grocery store and get some um, tomato paste in a tube, stick it in the refrigerator and you always have it. So we'll heat that up just a little bit. I'm telling you this is an easy, super easy dish and it's really pretty elegant. So how fun that midweek we can put together um, a nice, elegant dish. So now that we have that kind of swirling around and doing its thing, um, this is a technique from Nigella Lawson. She's one of my favorite chefs. And um, yeah, so she says instead of using white wine and trying to figure out what to do with white wine, what's left over, just use dry vermouth. Dry vermouth has a screw top and it stays forever in your pantry. And you can use it just like for white wine. So we're going to deglaze this pan and then reduce it. Let it reduce. I'm going to crank it up just a little bit. We want it nice and thick and gooey and yummy at the bottom. So that was an amazing tip of, you know, because I used to use white wine and then I'm freezing the cubes and oh my gosh. And then when Nigella says, hey baby, I just use uh, vermouth, I'm like all over that one. <clears throat> and it also comes as red and kind of a rosé. So if you need a, a red wine and you don't need a whole lot, you don't want to open up a whole bottle for, you know, a quarter cup, I, that's a really great tip. So that's my nod to Nigella. She's, she's amazing. <clears throat> so yeah, we wind up with this kind of nice gooey thing going on in the bottom. Looks like a nice kind of gooey paste. So, we will, um, now what we're going to do is add in, normally you would add in cream if you were going to go full fat here. We're not, so I just uh, combined some cashew cream and some soy milk. Sounds terrible, but it's good, I promise, like vermouth covers it up, okay? So, we're just going to add this in and gently stir it in and it will thicken. The tomato paste is your thickener. Okay, and yeah, so we're just going to make this into a really beautiful sauce. How about that? Here we go. Who says you can't make a cream sauce out of uh, plants? You can certainly do it. So, um, yeah, so we have this nice, easy cream sauce. You could put some little chili flakes if you wanted into it. We're going to add a little bit of sea salt. Let me grab my sea salt. All well knowing that I've got salt um, in the salt water with the pasta. And then I've got salt in the smoked mushrooms. And I don't, I'm going to put them in the very end because I don't want them to discolor the dish. I want my cream sauce to be nice and creamy and kind of a nice red like this. If you were doing this dish with porcini mushrooms, you wouldn't smoke them. You would probably saute them in some butter, and that's how I've done it with my bolites. Comes out fabulous. <clears throat> you can do that with chanterelles from Costco. But, you know, I just kind of want to do something different. I want to show you a technique with the smoked mushrooms. And then, it's pretty good. <clears throat> But you can make a nice, really beautiful, creamy, I don't want to boil it, because <clears throat> remember if it has any pea protein, some of these plant-based milks out of the carton will separate, so you want it to look, you don't want little white dots in it, okay, you want it to keep nice and creamy. Yeah, <clears throat> and then at the end, in fact, I think what I'm going to do with this one, I'm going to reverse what I was thinking about. I'm going to add the pasta in, 
And then, to be on the safe side, add the mushrooms so you can see what this is going to look like. Uh, now, one of the, uh, and again, this is the pastificio, little tube pastas. You know, some people go, oh, I just have to get used to eating whole grain pasta because it has a little, it has a different kind of texture. It's not that smooth and silky kind of texture. Um, there's a whole nother um, story on pastas and using Coruscant uh, Kamu pasta. That please go and look and research that. It's really interesting. So we're gonna let this thicken. And I'm just going to talk while I let it thicken. <clears throat> we might have to use the magic of the video, but you can always add um, peas if you need some color. I'm kind of a big put a pea, a green pea in it for some color. Always works. But we're going to just keep working this down and letting it get nice and creamy. To do with this as well is just look at how much starch is in that pasta water. So we're going to use that and we're going to allow the pasta, the starch in the pasta, to thicken the sauce as well. I think every, uh, every chef out there that's doing videos has that technique, but it's, it's a technique to keep in your toolbox for sure. So we absolutely want a creamy sauce. We want it thick. <clears throat> so a couple things. We can let it sit for a little while. Absolutely. I just want to taste it a little bit. Thank you, Nigella, for that vermouth trick. If you look at your sauce, you can see, gosh, I can run my spoon across it and it makes a little streak. It's still wanting to fill in just a little bit, but that's one way for you to know your sauce is coming along well is it's, uh, you can run a spoon through it. It's all perfect. So I think with this, I'm gonna go ahead and put in our um, mushrooms. I'm gonna use all of them. And again, I might, who knows. Mm. Yeah, so we just want just a little mush, smoked mushroom, some pasta. Isn't that going to be beautiful? And, we, and again, we, we're doing it at the end so our sauce doesn't turn smoky brown. I really want that difference in color. Not too shabby. So, yeah, put this in a pasta bowl and call it dinner. So, thanks for joining me. I hope you enjoyed this video. You got some tips on how to smoke mushrooms, and you can do a lot of different things with those, including making quinoa mushroom walnut burgers, the bomb. Um, so, you have a technique for mushrooms that you can use. You can put them in soups. And you got a little tip on your pasta water. You got to learn a little bit about Colorado agriculture and the wonderful grain scene that's happening. And learn to use vermouth instead of white wine. So not too bad. I hope you learned something today. Join me in my next series of videos. And as I always say, happy health.